Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous couple of videos, we talked about character encodings and the JSON spec. And today we're going to finally talk about how to bring a semi-structured format like JSON into a statically typed language like Scala with a very prominent library called Cersei, which is powered by cats. Let's get right to it. <music> As in most of my videos, I'm using an Ubuntu 18.04 virtual machine and I'm running Windows as a host, which gives me virtual desktops, which has shortcuts that allow me to switch between Windows like this and back to Ubuntu like that. All right, now, first and foremost, I would like to mention that when I was preparing for this video, I wasn't really sure what to talk about because Cersei and to be fair, many other JSON libraries in the Scala ecosystem, they make it very trivial to take some string and convert it into something that the Scala compiler can understand, which is typically an ADT or a co-product of some kind. And also to go backwards from this ADT to a string. But the devil is in the details and so there are many things to talk about. In fact, I'm afraid that we will have quite a few more videos about Jason and Cersei alone. So the plan for this video is for us to set up a playground SPT project as we usually do. Then I'm gonna throw in a couple of Cersei dependencies without explaining much. And then I'm gonna show you these couple of lines that allow you to convert from string to ADT and then backwards. And after that, we're gonna hit the brakes and talk about everything slowly. And in the next couple of videos, we're gonna talk about well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you just yet because I'm talking too much. Let's get to business. All right. So I'm going to open my terminal. I'm going to go to my dev folder. I'm going to use the template that we're using pretty much in most of my videos. And if you don't know this template, I actually have a video where I, where I created it. So you can go and check it out. All right. So once it's loaded, I'm going to call the project JSON Playground. Come on. There we go. JSON Playground like this. Organization is going to become dev inside you. And the package is going to be dev inside you like this. Let's open it with Visual Studio Code. All right, now, as you might know, uh, no, please, not now. I'm going to go to build SPT over here, not now. Uh, as you might know, I'm using this template for my actual projects. When I'm recording videos, I'm just going to uh, remove these couple of over here, okay, because we don't need the warnings. And because I want to avoid um, reloading Bloop uh, many times, I'm just going to copy paste the dependencies that we need. So they're kind of grouped over here. We have a couple of test dependencies, and we're going to throw the main dependencies later over here. But I'm also going to group the ones for so I'm just going to paste them over here. Let me save the file and we're like, it's going to be formatted. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, we can, no, not now. So the thing is that first of all, Cersei is very modular and we're going to go through these dependencies a bit later in the video. But the second thing you need to know is that Cersei depends on cats. In fact, the original version, um, the original name for Cersei was JSON for cats and it brings in the dependency on cats. But uh, I always advise you to specify the dependencies manually because then you're, uh, you're more in control of the version. Let me copy paste it so that we don't wa waste our time. All right. Well, Oops, it did not copy paste it. I have no idea why. Uh, top level, and we're gonna use these two, and we're gonna do a cat score. And the latest one is 2.1.1, which supports ColorJS as well. All right, I think we have everything, so let's finally import it. And um, while it imports, I'm going to show you the build. So we're using Scala 2.13.1. Uh, we're using um, SPT 1.3.8. Nothing major. I'm going to go to our main, which has our typical hello world. Once I save the file, Scala FMT is probably going to wake up in a couple of seconds. All right, so I finally finished. Let me also run SPT. We're going to run through SPT today. Okay, so while it loads, uh, we can start bringing our dependencies. So we're going to do IO Cersei. Come on, import. I know, Cersei. And again, I'm not explaining much. Uh, as, as I already mentioned, we're just going to throw in a couple of things. I'm going to show you this, uh, you know, back and forth example, and then we're going to hit, hit the brakes and explain everything slowly. All right. So we have three artifacts. And therefore, in fact, maybe I can open the build real quick like this. Okay. Maybe I can start running it actually. Um, all right. So uh, again, so we have uh, three Cersei dependencies, core generic parser, and then we have, therefore we have three imports, Cersei and generic and parser. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're gonna throw this out, we're gonna say final case class, person, name, string, age, int. All right, let's create an instance of person. Person, which is going to be person. It's gonna be Alice. Alice, and she's gonna be 27 years old, like this, let's save. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to um, encode this into JSON, okay? So we're gonna have a person encoded as JSON converted to string, a very descriptive name, I know, all right? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to grab an encoder, which is flying around in an implicit scope, and we do this by saying implicitly 
give me the encoder uh, for a person and uh, you know every, every, most libraries that are based on on cats they they come with a with a summoner object so the companion object for the encoder it has a method called apply which looks exactly like implicitly so we don't even need implicitly so we can just do this okay so this will uh, grab the instance and uh, we're going to call apply on it and we're going to pass in the person right which is our case class okay and then we're going to do to string and this is already going to be our json okay so if we scroll down a little bit i can do print out and we're going to do a pea come on please auto complete it oh, why is it parsed? pea maybe like this no come on there we go like this all right so we should already see this encoded into into json there we go this is typical json all right now let's go back so we could actually take this uh this string and then decode it back to the case class but in fact i'm going to copy paste it just so that it's more uh more clear so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to say that this is going to be some string a string over here all right i'm going to have these three quotes like this three quotes over here like this and please don't ruin the formatting for me of course you did there we go all right so this is going to be some string and let me scroll down a little bit so we're going to do val from string decoded person and it's going to return either an arrow an arrow or a person an arrow comes from uh, io.source all right so uh, we're just going to call a method called decode we're going to say please try to put that string to decode this this string into a person and um, this is the string there we go all right so uh now we can actually do something like that maybe and we can print it out print line from string decoded please i gotta complete it for me there we go all right so and there we go we have our case class going to json and our json going back to our case class it worked out which is why you know it's right and if it didn't work out let's say that we didn't have a comma over here it should actually uh, be an exception and there we go it's a left now it's a parsing failure expected blah 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 but got a comma whatever all right let's have a comma again and it works out let's bring it down we're going to play around with this a little bit later but um let's do a couple of things already so um first was the was the encoding let's say that alice was null alice was null let's see what's going to happen well it's going to throw an exception Gonna say null pointer exception. So what I want to show you is that if our name, if it was an option of string, uh, option of string, and we would say over here none, then the to string method over here it would encode it as a as a null in JSON. And what I want to show you is that there are many ways to uh, produce this string. So you can type in spaces spaces and then press control space and then you're gonna see okay. So the default version is spaces two. You can also do a spaces two sort by key. For example, age come first. Let's actually try this one. Space spaces two sort keys, and we're gonna see the age first. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we had exactly the same thing was was four spaces. We also have no spaces and we also have something like something like uh, drop null values and we also have deep drop null values right so if we have uh, uh you know nested json is going to go to all of them okay so we can do deep drop null uh, null values and then we can say uh again uh, spaces okay and let's do let's do four for fun okay spaces four sort keys and now it's not even going to display the null and it's going to have the four spaces okay so i just wanted to play around with this a little bit let me actually revert this so let me actually say to string over here and let me say that this is a string and this is going to be alice like this i just wanted to show you a couple of a uh, couple of ways before um you know before we take everything slow again all right so let's talk about this there are many things happening and you know you can think about it as you know there, there are like many layers it's not super visible over here so let's go through it okay so the first thing is that we're getting the encoder from the implicit scope we're going to talk more about this in the next video about where the encoders come from uh for now i'm just going to tell you that they come from this import okay so if we remove this import then this exactly this line and the line somewhere with the decoder over there it's not going to compile okay so this is called automatic derivation and we're going to talk about this more in the next video okay so we're getting this encoder and then we're we where we can you know by calling apply and giving it a person we can convert a case class into the json adt right so the json adt is defined somewhere in cersei and it's just a re representation of the typical json types you know like boolean uh, you know number and uh, uh and, and the string and, and, and whatnot 
all right and after that we have a couple of ways how we can convert it into a string as we have just seen you know we can do spaces two spaces four sort keys and so on now i want you to know just two things the first thing is that the only thing that we wanted to do during the encoding with our json was to decide how we convert it into a string however we might want to be able to do something else right so this um, intermediate thing you know this json adt that comes out of it we might want to traverse it and you know change it and, and filter it and whatnot we're not going to do this actually in, in and pretty much uh, all of my videos because a typical example is that you're going to have a web application where you know some json comes in it's going to it's going to get um, uh, decoded into a case class and then all, when you're producing the response you're going to encode it back into json okay so you, you usually you don't want to um, you're not interested in this intermediate layer okay but we're going to talk about it a little bit more and the second thing is that the decoding uh, doesn't look symmetric to the encoding, right? Notice over here, we kind of have like these three layers. Over here in the decoding, the API is kind of a bit different. We're kind of like skipping the layers. And this is happening because there's only one way to go from the JSON string to a case class, okay? To a case class person, even though we might be interested as well, you know, like like the same as during the encoding, in fact, maybe even more uh, to, to sort of get in into this intermediate JSON ADT layer and, and transform it and so on. But, you know, most of the time we can just skip this layer and, and go right through it. And as I just mentioned, it doesn't look very, very symmetrical. So I want to make it look a little bit more symmetrical. So another thing that we can do is we can sort of introduce like these artificial layers. Well, it's not artificial, just that we don't really need it. Okay. So we can say, uh, you know, parse uh, actually you know let me let me just go ahead here okay so we could say parse some string first okay and then this is going to give us either a, um, a parsing failure or a person and parsing failure extends arrow and arrow by the way extends uh, exception or, or throwable okay so we can parse it first and then we can uh, flat map and now it's going to look a little bit more symmetric okay so the same way as we're grabbing the encoder over here we can grab the decoder a decoder for person over here and we can call decode uh, json on it okay this is going to be exactly the same line let me do this it's getting very sunny over here so i had to close the blinds so my room is a bit darker now all right so another thing is that i want to do is i want to i want you to really see these uh three layers so what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to import uh scala util chaining and we played around with this in the video about um uh, about function juggling okay chaining okay so what we can do now is we can go over here and instead of this, uh, we could say, so let's get some string, okay? And let's pipe it into parse, okay? And let's do flat map. And let's do decoder uh, person dot decode JSON. Okay, so this way you kind of see more of these like, uh, these like three layers. And it doesn't compile because I don't know how to type. There we go like this now there's also some syntax sugar both for decoding and for encoding so instead of doing this i can just say so whatever comes in over here i can just say as as person okay so it's exactly the same as grabbing the decoder and calling dot decode json okay so it's exactly the same thing and we can also import some syntax for the encoding so we can go over here and we can import I know that Cersei dot syntax. Let me actually sort the imports. Oh, they're actually already sorted. Okay. So over here, uh, where's our encoding? Okay. So instead of grabbing the encoder, calling apply, you know, go into this um, intermediate layer and stuff, we can just go and say person dot sgs. Okay. And now to string or, you know, uh, we can do like spaces, spaces too. Okay. So you have like a, you know, a DSL for encoding, like on your case class, you just say as JSON, and then you decide how to convert it into a string. And during the decoding, you just basically have, if you have a case class, you say that as person, if you don't have a case class, if you're starting with a string, then you can, you know, go through the parse. So again, like this is some string. Okay. And this is, uh, you know, either a, uh, I believe it's called parsing or parse failure, uh, or JSON, which is how the, you know, the JSON ADT is called. And over here, it's going to be either an error or person like this okay and the same thing at the top uh over here if i were to press enter like this color fmt is going to spread this across uh three lines so over here we're going to have our adt right over here we're going to have the json adt and over here we're going to have the string okay in fact i believe I should use the same things over here. Okay, so I'm just gonna do uh, JSON ADT and I'm gonna put it over here, right? So this is a JSON ADT and, uh, you know, the person is our ADT. Okay, so uh, maybe, maybe do it like that. 
All right, oh, we still don't see don't see both of them. Also, notice that during the encoding before before we introduced the syntax, we were getting the uh, the encoder and then we were calling apply on it. However, if you remember just a couple of seconds ago when we were grabbing the decoder, we were not calling apply on it. We were calling uh, decode JSON on it. So there should be a way, you know, it should be even more symmetrical. Okay, and let me actually show you this. So before we were grabbing the decoder for uh, decoder for person and then we were saying dot decode uh, JSON like this all right so in fact what we can do is we can also call apply but calling apply would require some other layer it's kind of it's it's the layer where uh, where you kind of get the cursor which allows you to to traverse the JSON so uh, over here we can just map map to h cursor dot from JSON okay from JSON okay so over here uh, we're kind of gonna get uh, the cursor and if we ha have the cursor then we can just call apply okay so it's gonna be exactly the same thing it, it introduces like yet another layer there are like there are many ways to do this okay but you know in in, in most uh, you know most of the time you just want to go like from your strengths to um, to your case class and back so in fact we're gonna we're gonna remove all of that thing uh, all of these things so I'm just gonna go from string straight to decode decode into decode into person okay so this is going to give us well you kind of you kind of see the result okay so we have we just have the string and we're going to go straight to decode person okay this is this is the same thing as we had before right this is one function called decode into person and just give it a string all right so this is pretty much the final result right so this is how you would typically do it person dot as json spaces two or the other way around you just have some string you just pipe it into the decode or you just call decode and give it the string let me go on a tiny uh, tangent here. Um, so as we have seen in the previous video, uh, JSON is a very straightforward format. Not even looking into the Java ecosystem, uh, in the Scala ecosystem alone, we have at least like J like like 10 JSON libraries and uh, they all come with their own uh, version of a JSON ADT. And uh, some of them called uh, JSON for S actually tries to unite all of them. It sort of, tries, it sort of says, you know, hey guys, you know, just take, uh, take this ADT, okay? And another thing that you need to know is that you know, this parsing layer, the one where you go from the strings to this JSON ADT, you know, also like every library comes with their own parser. And this is one of the reasons why, um, why Cersei is actually so modular. So you could actually go to the build and you could say, you know, don't include the parser from, from Cersei, but include, for example, the Jackson parser. Let me actually go through these real quick. Okay. So this is where the JSON ADT comes from. Um, this is where the, where you decide how you're going to uh, generate the, um, the codecs, right? So the encoders and decoders, we're going to talk about this more in the next video. And over here, you're choosing the parser and uh, cats also, um, not cats, I'm sorry, the Cersei, well, cats as well, but Cersei also works for JSON4S. And so uh, if you just say in Cersei parser over here, if you're in on the JVM, then it's going to uh, use the so-called John, J-A-W-N parser. And if you're on the JavaScript land, then it's going to use the typical built-in JavaScript, uh, you know, JSON parser. Now for educational purposes, it would kind of make sense sort of to learn Cersei like layer by layer. Uh, however, as already mentioned a couple of times, usually you don't, you don't need this. You want to go from, from strings to your case class and, the, and then back. So uh, we're just going to skip that and uh, it's going to make sense. So uh, what I'm going to do is since we're already looking at the dependencies i'm actually going to add one more and it's called cersei cersei literal okay and we're going to import the changes and we're going to go to our main while it imports and we're also going to import io cersei uh, literal like this let me let me sort them sort them like this and so what it allows you to do it allows you to uh, use something like you know almost like a string interpolation uh, well actually it is string interpolation you can write this string over here and it's already going to be json okay so i'm just going to go over here i'm going to copy i'm going to paste that and i'm going to say that this is not just some string that this is actually already already json okay so the type of it is json right it's it comes from you know straight from cersei and all you need to do is you need to type in json over here right so it's the same like a string interpolation but it's a different interpolator okay like this so this is this is already json okay and now you can say um basically s similar to over here and we're just going to call it uh from json right from json decoded person over here we're going to say that this is going to be already already json now instead of going through the decode we're just going to say underscore dot as uh, person okay now let's go and um, print it out so over here it should look exactly the same okay there we go this is very very useful if you want to uh, use it uh, you know in your test for example now let's talk about it a little bit more um so uh, this is an interpolator which means that you can use uh, strings inside of it so let me actually copy that and uh, paste it over here so uh, we could just uh, take this whole thing out 
okay and we could just say for example dollar person right so the person is over here over here right so this is our case class so we're just sticking it in there and somehow it's still gonna work itself out okay let me actually print it out it's uh, over there right so it looks exactly exactly the same let's uh, throw this out all right so uh, let's actually go and introduce an error over here one of the beauties of this interpolator is that it's going to uh, break at compile time, right? So as you can see, it says not found value. It's an interpolator, right? Okay, uh, another thing that we can do is we can use, uh, you know, we can introduce some other uh, error. So if I throw this out again, we go in over here and I'm going to remove the comma, for example. Okay, and as you can see, it doesn't really work. Or let's, uh, I don't know, let's, let's remove maybe this column. Okay, as you can see, it just it just doesn't work out. Okay, so you have some, you know, you have a little bit of uh, of error checking over there. Another cool thing, and this might not work in Dotty once we finally arrive in Dotty because of the way macros works. Like this thing uses macros, okay. But at least for now, you can use uh, variables both for keys and for values, right? So the, using it for using variables for keys might not be possible once we arrive at um, at Dotty. Okay, so let's do uh, name key, which is a string, and it's going to be the name, and we're gonna do age value. And I'm just going to give you, uh, you know, giving you a couple more examples. Okay, so we can do a name key over here. Note that we don't actually need to use the the quotes, right? So we just do, you know, typical interpolation, age value over here, age value. Whoops, what happened? Age value. There we go, and it should behave exactly exactly the same. Now let me revert this real quick and show you one thing that uh, kind of got me got me surprised. All right, so uh, let's throw these out. Okay, and let's, um, where's the string? So we have uh, some string over here. So let's take and copy paste it, okay? And we're gonna say, um, did I copy just that? Okay, hold on, let me copy this, let me bring it down, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna say that this is, uh, you know, still string, or in fact, let's call it not JSON because I actually kinda wanna break it, okay? So let's say that we're not gonna have this uh, curly brace, which makes it not a valid JSON, okay? So over here in order to JSON, uh, you can go over here, okay? And you can do dollar not JSON. And what's gonna happen is that it's still somehow gonna compile, right? You would expect a compilation error, but somehow, you know, it's it's macros. It's it's there's always dark magic in there. Okay, so somehow it managed actually to you know to uh, to go through the through the compiler, um, and you know obviously it couldn't it couldn't be decoded. Okay, uh, but it's you know. I'm, I'm trying to avoid using like these, you know, as much as possible, like these, these magical things. Okay. Even in my tests, uh, I actually have my JSON in, in the files. As I will show you, it's actually not that hard to do. And also because, you know, in a typical, in, you know, in typical editors or IDEs, if you have a JSON file, then you also get, you know, your IDE or editor support, you know, you get uh, syntax highlighting, you get, you get linting and, um, and so on. In fact, since we're pretty much done with the overview, let me actually throw everything out everything out except for maybe oh, I hate it when it does that except for maybe the case class person like this and let me actually go and create a file so we're gonna have source main I'm gonna say new file I'm gonna say resources I'm gonna call it data.json data okay so I'm gonna open over here we actually don't need so much space over there so let me bring it to the right so let me paste uh, our JSON over there so you know we get like syntax highlighting you know we got we get the same like error handling over here uh, we also have like auto completion for um, for for keys right so for example if I say name if I press tab it's gonna insert the quotes for me so it's you know it's very very convenient all right so we're gonna have it like sitting over there all the time. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and create a, a helper that would, you know, would read out, uh, read it out from the file, okay? So I'm gonna call it, um, uh, I'm gonna call it a read JSON from dot column, all right? So I prefer to have my packages like this, all right? So we're gonna have a bunch of imports. So we're gonna do java.net URL. We're gonna have scala.io. We're gonna have, uh, cat implicit and we're gonna have io source and we're gonna have io source source dot parser i'm gonna have it uh you know just it's, it's just it's just gonna be an object it's called read json from okay and now bloop should shut up because there's you know bloop and metals all right so uh, i'm gonna structure it um uh, very beautifully so that you can uh, read it like top to bottom it's going to be like i don't know six or seven methods but they're all going to be like pretty much one-liners okay so the first one is going to be called uh we're going to be able to read a json from a url into some a okay so assuming that we have a decoder for that we can give it a url 
which is just a string, and it's going to produce either a throwable, right? Because you know maybe the file is not there or whatever, or you know the your, the the resource is not there. Okay, or it's going to you know actually succeed and produce a name. Okay, so it's going to call get URL, and it's going to give it it's going to give it the URL, and it's going to call flat map URL into a okay so both of these methods don't exist get url doesn't exist url into also doesn't exist okay so get url is going to be a private def i'm just kind of used to uh doing like this it's absolutely unnecessary i'm just kind of used to it okay so it's going to be called get url i'm going to give it the url which is a string it's going to do either throwable or the url okay all it's going to do is going to use this method from gets catch none fatal okay we're just going to do new URL in case it throws uh, exceptions, right? It's a Java thing, right? So um, now we also need to do URL into and URL into in fact, is going to look very much like this one. Okay, so It's gonna be URL into it's just gonna be an overload, you know an overload which already accepts the URL Okay, so it's gonna produce a throwable or an a otherwise it's gonna look exactly the same. Okay, so over here We're gonna do from URL URL, okay from URL doesn't exist either. Okay, so we're gonna do map Get lines dot make string, and then we're going to do flat map, flat map, and this is you know the call to the decode from from Cersei. Just decode A for us, okay? From URL doesn't exist yet, so it should uh, break over there, okay? So we're going to go and we're going to say private this. I'm going to say def from URL. Going to give it the URL, okay? Now it's going to produce either a throwable or a thing called buffered source, which comes from a Scala I/O over here, all right? Let's go down. So this is going to be an equal sign. Okay, and we're just going to say either dot catch non fatal source. This is the Scala IO source from URL. Okay, and we're just going to give it the URL like this. And over here, you could also specify the codec, which also comes from Scala IO. So uh, you can say codec dot uh, UTF 8, for example, right? But UTF 8 is actually the, the default. Okay, so this is the Scala dot IO dot uh, codec. All right, this one. Okay, but let me throw this one out. Okay, so you can pretty much read the top to bottom. Okay, so we're getting the URL. We're um, we're uh, converting the URL and you know converting the string URL into the actual URL. Then we're flat mapping it into URL into and URL into uh, just gets this buffered source, which is a stream of lines essentially, right? So we can do like get lines, uh, then make string, and then you know we have the string and we flatten it into flat mapping it into the decode. And we're also going to have the same thing for the resources. Okay, so in fact we're going to reuse a lot of them. Okay, so uh, let me actually. Um, let me, let me actually copy this one, uh, bring this one over here, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's not do URL until let's do resource into, okay, and it's going to get a resource name, resource name over here, right? But the, it's going to produce exactly the same thing, and it's going to be the same pattern. So over here, the first thing we did was get URL. The first thing that we're going to do over here is we're going to say get resource, okay? We're just going to give it the resource name, and then we're going to do the same thing as over here, flat map URL into. Okay, flat map URL into. In this case, it already it already exists. Okay, so all we need to do is we need to do private this. In fact, let me actually copy paste uh, this one. All right, so this is get URL over here. Now we're just going to call it get resource, and this is going to be resource name, and it's going to produce either a throwable or a URL, the same as before. And we do other cache non fatal, and instead of this, we're just going to do get class, get class loader, get resource. And we're going to give it the resource name. All right. So now this thing is complete. Just a couple of lines. And, you know, I'm going to upload it into some gist or something so that, can, uh, so that you can play around with this. Okay. So now we can go back to our main. We have our person. And we can just say val from resource decoded person, which is going to be either a throwable, throwable or a person. And now we're just going to call our method, right? So we're going to say read JSON, read JSON from resource into into a person, okay, and we're going to say that the resource name equals data dot JSON like this. All right, so now that I read it out, we can go and do a print line from resource. Please, I complete auto complete it. There we go. All right, and as you can see, it worked right. So it read this JSON into over here. Okay, so now it's it was Alice. Now it's Bob. There we go. Nice and easy. Uh, come on, make it back back to a string. All right. Now, uh, I want to uh, um, to make this a little bit more beautiful because we're going to play around with it, and I want you to see, you know, clearly when there is an error and, and when when there is not an error. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to um, use a tap over here. So instead of just doing uh, resource into, we're also going to say tap tap 
and we're just going to do print line, right? So this is just a little bit better. This comes from comes from uh, Scala Util uh, uh, Scala Util Chaining, the same as pipe. In fact, we're going to use pipe over here, right? So instead of this whole thing, uh, in fact, maybe I'm going to do um, write it over here, right? So we're going to do data.json, right? So we're taking um, a resource name. Uh, all we're doing it with a, we're piping it to read JSON from dot resource into into a person person come on person what's wrong and after that we're going to do the tap right so this kind of reads like a uh, nicer okay so we're going to do we're going to do this i have no idea why it's so hard for me to type person today all right again taking a string piping it into the into the resource tapping into print line let me also introduce a couple of helpers in fact uh, we're going to play with this uh, project in the upcoming videos as well so i'm just going to go and create a package object and it's kind of cool because metals actually has a thing called new scala file and i can just say please create a package object for me and now it creates this how beautiful is this all right so over here i'm going to have def print line good okay so it's going to print out the stuff in green unit equals print line console dot green actually we don't need this okay green uh, plus n plus console dot reset like this and i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it over here and i'm going to say print line bad bad is going to be in rad like this and you know what since we're going to play uh you know a, lo a lot with piping and tapping we're actually going to define it ourselves and this way we won't need to, uh, to import it and also we can define um you know our, our own helpers okay so i'm just going to say real quickly over here final implicit class this is going to be syntax for pipe and tap in fact let's just call it pipe and tap uh pipe and tap like this okay so it's going to be an a over here it's going to take a private private val private val a which is a extends any val okay so we're just going to do inline final def pipe it's going to take some b it's going to take a function that goes from a to b okay and it's going to produce a b and it's just going to produce it just by calling it and we're going to do i have no idea why i can't type today pipe and tap so for tap okay let's save it real quick because maybe metals can't rename b to you for me okay maybe it can't Maybe it can't u and u. This is the function that goes from a to u, and so it's gonna call it over here. Oh man! All right, but then it's gonna throw out the result, and it's just going to return a like this. Okay, so this is the this is the pipe, and this is the uh, tap. It actually should return an a a like this. Okay, and let's also create our own. This one is not present in the standard library. It's gonna be called tap dot as not dot s gonna tap as tap as <laughs> okay so uh, and that's just gonna get a u which is gonna be a by name parameter okay like this so all it's gonna do is it's just gonna perform perform a side effect right so this will allow us to do something like uh tap as and we can do a print line hyphens for example right so we can ignore the ignore the a and just you know just perform the perform the side effect okay so now with these guys in place we can actually go back to our main we can throw a scala util chaining and over here, instead of just tapping print line, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do tap. And remember, this is an either. And if we have cat implicit uh, imported, which we do, right? We have, uh, no, we don't. All right. We actually need that import cats implicit. Okay. Then on an either or, you know, or a tuple or something like this that, that has like two things, you can actually call by map. And then you can give it, um, you know, what, w give it a function that will uh, allow it to do something like with, with the left side, which is going to be print line print line bad and something to do with the right side which is going to be print line print line good okay okay so basically what it's going to do is if there's an error it's going to be displayed in red like over here it's going to be red and otherwise it's going to be green okay so this is very very uh very very cool and also uh because we're just going to keep playing around it's not going to be just person it's actually going to be called uh data okay please help me data there we go nice another thing that i want to do is i want to improve the two string over here so i'm going to paste something from my script okay so now it's going to render uh, render the data like this it's sort of it's sort of going to look like json right so there's no no magic over here there was this one thing that was added in scala 213 which allows you to get to get the the names of your products right so from from your case classes you can just get to get the names we're going to zip it with the actual values and you know we're just going to print them out you know with a couple of spaces it's not perfect but you know it's it's fine for um for our use case all right so let's go and change this one for example to key one key one and this one is going to be key two all right yes please no oh, come on key two tap there we go all right so uh, as you can see it's kind of nice that we've seen the the arrows in red okay so let me change uh just these two 
this is going to be key one and this is going to be key two okay so uh basically what we're going to do is we're going to um to uh play around with, with different things that you can read it out for example the first thing over here so as you can see we're reading the key two into an integer but it turns out that we can actually use a string over here and it's still going to work okay notice that when we're going to you know go back and you know encode it again which which we're not doing over here when we're going to encode it again it's going to be encoded as an int so it's not going to be uh you know an isomorphism okay and in fact let me go back and actually use the 27 over here okay so the first thing that you need to uh, to know is that obviously you don't need to read in the entire thing okay so in this case for example we have more keys than we're than we're parsing which is totally fine okay we're gonna parse them all uh later okay so we're gonna have key three uh, we're gonna have key four over here which is gonna be false uh, we're gonna have key five which is going to be uh null and we're gonna have key six uh six which is going to be an array of uh one three three seven like this um then uh what else in fact let me save it yeah there we go that's that's what i thought would happen okay and let's also have uh key seven uh which is going to be a nested object okay so we're going to have an object inside of an object and it's also going to have a key one and um i'm running out of examples over here uh let me actually do that like this and, and this one is going to be key two okay and this is going to be four five six seven like this all right so now let's go and try to read them out so uh we're going to do key three key three which is going to be a boolean and as soon as i save it i can forget my scala fmt in such a way that it will collapse these lines as soon as we have like three arguments all right so this is key three uh this is going to be key four all right this is going to be key five now notice that if we say for example that it's going to be an integer but key five is null so it's actually going to throw an exception and usually like this is the thing like when you're dealing with json that is not yours uh just wrap everything into option and um you know source is going to uh, convert it into a none all right so let's do key six key six um the cool thing is that you know this is an array but you can read it into a sequence you can read it into a, into a list but you can also read it into a set and it's going to remove this three for you right because set sets cannot have duplicates right so you have like one three and seven okay you can also do a sequence or you know you can also do uh you know list whatever uh probably also like something like vector right yeah so basically everything that is sort of like a sequence let's actually leave leave uh, this set okay so now let's do key seven and key seven is a uh, nested object okay so we need another thing so we're going to call it sub data or something like this so let's go let's go over here let's do a final case class sub data and we're going to have key one which is a string and we're going to have key two uh which is an int okay notice that we don't have this fancy rendering for sub data but it's fine okay so this is you know this is how you do like um uh nested things and by the way the absent keys are treated as null as i showed you in the beginning so uh, over here we're saying key five is an option of int and it's null and if we actually throw it out like this it's gonna be it's gonna behave the same way right so if the if the key is not there it's still gonna be wrapped into into none okay let's actually introduce it um back another thing that you need to know is that if you have an object uh, which has like only two fields then you can read it into a map and by default um, um you know the encoders that are provided by by uh, uh, sorry the decoders that are provided by de by default they only work for maps which key which keys are strings okay so if you want a key with a different um with a different type you need to provide your own uh decoder all right so uh instead of doing sub data over here we can do something like map string int over here and we'll be able to to read this thing uh this thing in there actually it looks like both of them need to be strings that's interesting i kind of thought that the values could actually be be ints what what's wrong okay so both of them are strings and it works i actually had different results when i was preparing for this video it's like it's it's a bit weird anyway um basically uh, maps only work for for all of the strings if you remember from the previous video the json spag actually doesn't technically forbid duplicate values so if we had a duplicate duplicate value over here so let's say that key three was not true let's say that it was false over here right so we get a warning right but it's not an error so it reads it in and it looks like the bottom one actually overrides it right so key three is now is now false okay which kind of makes sense right why would you read a part of that reads json backwards all right let's actually throw it out again right just so just so that you know also since we are reading it in with utf8 over here remember our codec over here uh we could specify the code but the default codec is utf8 anyway so we can do fancy things like uh smileys over here okay so there we go this is our smiley we can also uh copy it oh oh man all right let's go and copy it let's control shift c 
all right and bring it in and paste it over here like this let me save that and spt reload it soon ish come on there we go run and it still works the same as before we have our smiley over there all right cool another thing that i want to show you is that uh, if you have default values it's still not going to help you if, if the value is not present in json right okay so let's say that we have a whatever here it's going to be an int right now obviously it's going to explode but even if you had a default value like for example you know 133 1337 over here it's still not going to help why are you taking like so long to compile there we go okay whatever 1337 it's still not going to help it's still going to explode there we go all right let me throw it up let me also show you the floating values. Okay, so if we're gonna have floating, uh, floating one, and we're gonna have zero dot one two three four five six seven eight, and then we're gonna have this thing again one two three four five six seven eight. Okay, nine. You know, <laughs> kind of forgot the nine. Okay, so we're gonna have floating one, and we're gonna have uh, the same value for floating, uh, floating two, and we're also gonna have long one, uh, which is going to be. Uh, let me actually paste this okay so this is the um uh this is one more than fits into a long okay so we're gonna have come over here and we're gonna have a two over here okay now if we go and try to read this in so if we're gonna do a uh, floating one which is gonna be a double okay then uh notice that it's going to lose a little bit of precision over here right so um it ends with five six eight so this six seven eight nine they they turned into an eight uh, so uh, if you're dealing with something like money values because you know, remember in JSON there are no constraints there are no there, there's no limit like this number could be as long as, as you want it okay but you know inside of an actual programming language like Scala you know which runs on the JVM there are actual limits because it actually needs to, to fit into memory okay so if you read this in into a big decimal you actually have your, um, your real value let's do long one uh, and it's going to be long and now it should throw an exception because this number as i already mentioned it's actually one one bigger than the actual long okay so this is this should fit as you can see 807 uh, which is the max long but this one is not going to fit okay but uh, you know what you can do is you can do long too and you can read it into a big integer okay so now it's going to fit now this video is getting too long but i want it to be sort of like a little bit self-contained so uh, i need to speak about automatic derivation a little bit and all of these videos in the data juggling plays for example where you know where i introduced use you know pure config and you know refined and then squants and all of these things uh, most of them are based on shapeless and, um, and so the way they do automatic derivation of the implicits which we're going to talk more about in the next video is that you know it's it's um it's really fancy, but it but it comes at a at a cost. Uh, so for example, it's slower. It's slow at, at compilation time. It's also slow at runtime, and uh, also it doesn't always generate what you what you need. Again, we're going to talk about this more in the next video. But um, I want to show you um, something that you might need from JSON, and this is uh, changing the keys. Okay, especially if this is a JSON that you don't control. You know, they could be you know could use a kebab case over here or a snake case over here. However, when you read it in, most of the time you want to use a camel case. Okay, so we're going to go through all the possibilities in the, in the next video but for now I want to show you uh, what you can do you know I want to show you like at least one of them so that uh, you know m you might not be interested in, in watching the uh, the upcoming videos okay so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this key 4 into key 4 uh, camel case okay so if I just uh, copy that and go over here right so if you do if you're doing uh, exactly the same thing then it's gonna match and it, then it doesn't matter if you do you know key 4 uh, key 4 underscore snake case okay so if you just um do that over here same thing snake snake come on snake snake case like this if we just compile it like this it's not gonna um oh actually that's compile okay so it, it's gonna compile like this for snake case but if this was a kebab case it wouldn't compile okay like this right it wouldn't compile but you could use the the back quotes okay then it would actually still work if i had the same thing over here right da -da -da, like this Right, so everything everything works. Okay, let me actually convert this back to snake case. I want to have snake case. Okay, now uh, there is a way to uh, to have a snake case or a kebab case or, or, or what you want in, in your JSON. Uh, but when you once you read it in, um, use a camel case over here. For this, we're gonna uh, have another module. Uh, let's go over here and let's also have uh, generic uh, extras. Okay, let me make sure that they're alphabetically sorted well almost okay let's import changes okay so now we can go back to our main and we can have so we can remove the uh, automatic derivation this is not the one that we're going to use now uh, instead what we're going to do is we're going to have import io.cersei.generic.extras. 
extras underscore. Okay, so instead of using uh, auto, we're just using these these extras. And uh, what, we can, what we can do now is we can go to our, our data and you can over here say add configured JSON codec. Okay, and we need it as over here as well. Okay, now the only problem is that it's not going to compile because it actually now needs a configuration. Let me actually bring uh, bring SPT back. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our package object and we're going to create this this configuration. Okay, so we're going to say uh, implicit val config configuration, and now we're just going to do configuration, which is a package object in there, and we're going to do dot default dot, and now we can do something like whiz. Um, okay, we don't have auto completion because I did not bring in the import. Okay, maybe I can uh, save it and maybe metals can do it. No, okay. Uh, all right, so we can do import io.sourcy.generic.extras.configuration like this. And now we should be able to say with control space, come on. And now we can do something like with snake case, uh, with snake case uh, members, okay? Something like this. Let me actually also press enter over here. Okay, so now everything in main compiles, and now for example, if we have a snake case over here, we can still go over here and we can say key for uh, snake case, right? So now it's called now it's called snake case, but it's but it is actually a um, uh, a, a camel case over here. There we go. Our key for uh, worked as a charm. Okay, snake case false. There we go. Cool. Now we're pretty much done with the video. It's way too long as always. I want to give you just one more example where we're actually going to read in some some proper JSON API, not some random example, but some actual, you know, actual API. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the GitHub API. So if I go to my browser and I Google for something like GitHub API, I'm going to click on the very first link. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and the, the entire API is over here. In fact, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, like this. So the API is over here. So basically if I go in there, I should see some JSON coming back. Let me zoom in again. Okay, so this is a true REST API. You rarely see an API that is that is uh, designed as, as as good as this one. So basically, you have your JSON object, but every key actually points you to uh, to the URL that you need to uh, to get the next value. So the one that we're going to play around with is going to be uh, user repositories URL. So we can just copy this. Okay, and I can go, I can copy, uh, paste this in, and as a user over here, which is a variable, I'm going to do dev uh, dev inside you okay and the repository so we can specify the page and you know how you know how to sort and whatever so i'm just going to do a repos just give me like all my repos and how did you get in there have inside your repos okay there we go so these are all of my repositories so obviously we're not going to read in the, the entire thing and by the way look at that it uses snake case okay we're just going to read in i don't know the name and uh, maybe something nested uh the license for example okay so we're just going to read this this one in so we're going to go back and uh we're going to um uh let me copy paste that and paste it over here and i'm just going to call it uh from url decoded github response okay so it's going to give me an either a throwable or it's going to give me a sequence of github response okay so um by the way before i kind of forgot to move these guys out um right now we don't really need them but still so i'm gonna i'm gonna cut them out so that they're not in the main i'm just gonna paste them over here okay and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a final case class uh github github response GitHub response. For now, it's going to be empty. I just wanted to compile. Okay, so we're going to have um, a, a sequence of GitHub responses over here, and uh, I'm going to not read them into. Um, uh, so I'm not going to read a resource. I'm going to say URL into, and it's going to read in the sequence of GitHub GitHub response. And for this, we we're going to need to use the same URL as we used over there, which is this one, right? So just put it in over here. And now it actually might succeed because we're not reading any values, but everything else uh, actually kind of works out. Let's see. That find implicit value of evidence type source decoder. Oh yeah, um, I forgot to to do that thing. Okay, we actually need the decoder. Read your error messages, folks. <laughs> All right. So now it should actually succeed, but we're not reading any any values in there. Okay. So uh, let's actually read them out. So let's, for example, read in the uh, name, which is a string. In fact, let's just read in the name. Okay. There we go. Name string. Let's actually not do the other one. Um, let's just let's just not do the tap. Okay. 
there we go. Okay, so uh, these are all of my repositories. So install Google Chrome, install GraalVM, and, uh, and all of these. Okay, so let's read it in the license as well. So let's say that we're going to have the license over here, which is going to be an option, right? So not, not, every, not every project has a license. Okay, so we're going to do this. And it's going to be a uh, final case class uh, license. And it's going to have the key string name string spdix i have no idea what this is actually actually it's uh, spdx id okay which is a string it's going to have a url which is an option of string and it's going to have the note id which is a string and by the way notice that uh, all of these are camel case right so if i go back you're going to see that the license actually has you know has them with a snake case okay all right uh, let's go back and also let's uh, improve the um, the printout a little bit. So um, let's have over here. So on the right, it's going to be a list. Okay, so we can just do uh, for each. Let's have another brand over here. Okay, that's already much better. Let's also count, count them real quick. So let me go to the package uh, object and have an implicit final class sequence ops. Okay. So we're just going to add another, uh, add one more method to a, a sequence. So it's going to be self. There's going to be some sequence of a. It extends any val, okay? And we're just going to have def with one based index and swap because usually the index would be on the right. I want to have it on the left, and I want it to be uh, one base instead of uh, zero base, right? Which means that it will start with a one instead of a zero. Okay, so we're going to take our sequence and we're going to do zip zip with index. We're going to map that. So uh, this part is going to make sure that the index is actually one based. Okay, and we're also going to swap it over here like this yeah so over here what's happening is that i'm calling map on a tuple which you know and, and tuples don't have that so uh, we need to import cats implicits like this and now it should actually work all right so now we can go back to our uh, we can copy that we can go back to our main and before we do it for each we can also do we can also do that and uh, now once my laptop cools down a little bit and we can actually, it actually finish compiling. It's going to look more beautiful. It's going to have the, the number of the repositories and it's going to start with a one. So the last number that we're going to see is actually going to be equal to the amount of the repositories that I have, which is 30 over here. All right. And by the way, notice that if I scroll up a little bit, in fact, let me do this. Um, then we're going to see that not every repository, for example, has a license. We should see a none somewhere, right? So some, some, some some here this one for example the function juggling that i recently uh, uploaded it actually doesn't contain a license okay and also the license itself it doesn't always contain um all of the fields and basically when i was playing around with it this is what i meant in the beginning you know if you don't make these as options right so let's just make this one as a, as a string maybe not every license has a url and then it's going to explode because like one of them is not going to have it yeah there we go. All right. So uh, usually when you're dealing with like foreign APIs, you would, you would, you know, you would use options everywhere. All right. I'm sorry again that this video got way too long. And uh, please remember that there's, there's going to be at least two more videos. And for now, as always, it's been Vlad, devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today, consider supporting me on Patreon and thus watch all of my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.